Hello everyone, it is the Gaming Weasel back again with another video and in today's video I'm going to be covering how to boost your FPS inside of Warframe in 2021. Now the last time I did this kind of video, an FPS boost video, was a long long time ago so i'm gonna be showing you some some basic things not really going in depth into your pc or or inside of warframe i'm just gonna be showing you the basics something that helped me and uh, that i know will help out your fps so first things to reverse we're gonna be starting off in game of course and starting off with the basics so my average fps inside of warframe is around 70 to 80 fps at these settings so we go into display uh, we have the classic engine we have full screen 1080p 144 hertz even though i almost never reach this aspect ratio is going to be auto then aspect of put vertical sync to off max frame rate but no limit or you could put the limit of your monitor's refresh rate so if your monitor is 60 hertz 120 144 to 240 put it at that but i usually leave it at no limit then we have a uh, color blind comp uh, compensation you can put this if you have any sort of color blindness so this is personal preference and the same goes with a color blind filter strength we have brightness, contracts, and field of view. Field of view, I always keep a 90 just because more field of view is better. But if you want to save up just that tiny bit of FPS, put it around 80 or, or 70, maybe 75. But I think the, the difference is going to be minuscule enough that you're not going to even notice it. So I would just recommend it at 90. Now, enable screen shake. I would recommend you just keep this off anyway, just because you don't want your screen to shake in any situation i love it when you know it's just normal and uh, so you don't really have to worry about it reduce the image visual effects definitely keep this on it's going to help you uh you know with your fps as well because if you have 300 squad mates throwing around abilities like madmen this is going to be very very useful to reduce the fps drop that you're going to get same goes for effect intensity you can put this higher you can put this lower i keep it at 100 which is the base value but if you want you can turn it out even lower which means you're gonna even save up even more fps so moving on to graphics quality i put the preset to custom so uh, for me because uh, i try to make warframe look pretty decent because i the graphics card that i'm using is actually not a graphics card it is a cpu or an apu i guess it is going to be the Ryzen 5 3400G. Um, and so local reflections, blur reflections, and volumetric lighting is on for me. But you can definitely turn this off for more FPS. Same goes for all of these. A uh, couple of things that I recommend you turn off anyway, even though your PC might handle it, is uh, the film grain. I don't like that. Or glare that makes, you know, uh, have excessive brightness. So, mm, I, I don't really like this doesn't really help me much uh, for me then our resolution is turned off i don't like it if i want a resolution i'm gonna put it to my native one so uh, medium settings is gonna be everything for me uh antisoptic filtering and trial and filtering is set to off uh e honestly just set it to low it's pretty basic and simple anti-aliasing should be for me always off but you can keep it on if you want uh, then uh, taa sharpen you can use this so you don't have to i'm going to show you something that i honestly use and it does a pretty good job of it so i'm going to show you that a couple of minutes later on then we have sharpen uh, temporal fvf sorry vfx uh keep this off from default for me it is on but it's turned off because anti-aliasing is turned off so depth of field motion blur distortions bloom uh, color correction and then dynamic lighting character shadows weapon element effects uh, and everything turn it off weapon element effects doesn't really affect your frame rate i haven't noticed it does uh, neither have i seen that uh, character shadows really reduce your fps that much dynamic lighting maybe uh color correction i'm actually gonna turn on because i have no idea why it's turned off so i'm gonna confirm that I'm just gonna go back and, and show you guys uh, so yeah mostly keep those off uh, to be honest with you bloom just looks ugly in my opinion uh, distortions you know 
why would I put distortion effects if I don't need to? But if you want to make it look cool, yeah, cool. But you know, but I don't. I mostly turn it off just because of videos. So motion blur just makes everything blurry. So. And it says, during rapid movements, you move around rapidly in Warframe 90% of the time. So, this is off. And Depth of Field is okay, but I turned it off uh, mostly because of my capture scenes and I don't really get good pictures from it. So, Depth of Field is going to be good to turn off as well. Now, if we go to gameplay, honestly, uh, nothing really here to change much. Uh, the thing that you can do is you can maybe let me just see it is in interface yes you can show fps and turn it on as you can see my average fps is around 60 at the moment because i'm recording you can see your ram uses usage and your vram usage you can also see your ping here down below so you can turn that off uh honestly everything else from here shouldn't really affect your fps so you don't have to worry about that so that is mostly it inside of warframe uh, and I'm going to be moving on to my desktop now. So I guess I'll see you guys there. Okay, so we are on my desktop right now. And then I'm going to show you a couple of cool things that you can do inside of your PC. Nothing too uh, crazy, nothing too, you know, dangerous. So you do not have to worry about anything. What you're going to do is go into your search and type in MS config. So system configuration should uh, pop up. This is going to help your PC boot up faster and, uh, you know, just use up your uh, the, the most of your CPU just to boot up much faster. So uh, you're going to select no GPU boot, uh, no GUI boot, sorry, and then timeout three seconds. And you're going to click advanced options and then go here, select maximum number of cores, which is eight for me. It might be four, six, 12, 34. 1 million for you but select that so this is going to use all your processor scores to actually boot up it's not going to overheat your processor it's not going to damage it don't worry about it. it i've been using this and almost everybody has for the past uh, who knows how long and it didn't do anything so you don't have to worry about that uh maximum memory do not select this and i will show you why a little bit later on so keep this in mind do not select this then what you're going to do is click services and then hide all Microsoft services and disable by clicking the checkbox here and disable anything that you do not need running in the background. Epic Games, you do not need running in the background. There's no point of it. For example, I disable the Google LLC uh, processes or services in the background as well because I do not need them active. Uh, for example, I can disable uh, rather than VPN as well because I do not need it and it's disabled. They're just running in the background. I need to change a couple of things there. Steam is running in the background because Steam is very... Uh, you need to have this enabled because sometimes uh, Steam won't launch if you disable this. So I wouldn't recommend you do this and neither would I recommend to, for you to disable uh, your uh, graphics card uh, services. So startup, then click open task manager, then same thing goes here. So anything that you do not need, right click and then click disable. So for example, let's say I don't need any crisp, click disable. I kind of do need it because I'm using it for noise suppression. So I'm using that, but yeah, you can definitely disable anything that you do not need and uh, exit out of that one. And then what we're going to do is exit out of this one. Uh, a little window is going to appear. It's going to say you need to restart your PC for these uh, changes to apply. Just click apply, uh, click uh, exit without restart, or you can even restart it at that point if you want. And you're pretty much done. Don't forget to, of course, up click apply changes because, I mean, that's pretty basic. So I don't really need to explain that. So what you're going to do is go into your search bar and type in power. So you're going to click choose a power plan and then select high performance. Now, if you want to go a little bit of detail with this, you can go and click change plan settings and then change advanced power settings. So put it here in the middle. Uh, scroll a little bit down, go to processor power management. Don't worry, this is not going to burn out your CPU or do any damage to it. This is just... Uh, on parking the cores that your CPU has in it, I guess, of well, CPU, I guess, uh, but they are uh, sort of put in a hibernation or sleep because they're not used. And if you activate them, you will have more processing power, of course, because it makes sense. Because if you have more active cores, more processing power is here. So, what you're gonna click is processor performance. Uh, core parking minimum cores, but this at 100%. This is going to unpark all of your cores. 
then minimum processor state set this at 100 then performance uh, processor performance core parking over utilization threshold uh, I honestly do, wouldn't change this i put this at 60 percent it actually it, it put itself at 60 percent do not change that system cooling policy you can set this to active or oppressive i set it to active because of course it is my processor and then maximum process state 100 percent and there you go mostly that uh, you can uh, change if you have an integrated amd graphics card like i do uh, amd graphics power settings and then power play and then click settings and then maximum performance so multimedia you do not need to do anything and you're virtually done with this click apply and click ok so what you're gonna do next is click uh, the search bar again this pc then click properties then what you're gonna see is as you as i mentioned earlier clicking that maximum memory usage is gonna result in something like this so 16 gigabytes in my case and 13.9 usable now this might be a different number for you for me it is a bit different i as you saw there I, it was never selected for me is uh, for yeah in my case is that my cpu or apu uses 2.1 gigabytes of my memory for the i guess vram so that is why it says 13.9 usable for me but for you it will 90 percent of the time be because of that setting uh, of it being activated so going to advanced system settings we're right here next uh, uh, on the on the right side you can go into performance click settings and then click custom enable peak where this will allow you to see that uh, there are items inside of folders and then show thumbnails instead of icons will show of course pictures of the actual pictures not just icons and then smooth edges of screen fonts well screw smooth edges of screen fonts so that's mostly it click apply and click ok uh, i wouldn't recommend you touch anything here maybe set this uh actually not maybe but set this adjust uh for best performance of programs not background services so set this to that and everything else i wouldn't prefer you touch and that is mostly it concerning that couple programs you can download you can download quick cpu uh, this program is going to allow you to unpark your cores and increase the, I guess, power of your CPU. It's not going to overclock your CPU, so keep that in mind. That's the, that's a totally different thing. This is just going to allow you to, to turbo boost your, and frequency scaling is going to be turned on, and the core parking is going to, for example, let's say, for me, four cores of my eight will be parked, and in this case, none of them are. I increase the performance. As you can see, this is not going to do anything towards your, your PC or your CPU. It's not going to ruin it. As you can see, I'm running at 52 degrees centigrade. It's, it's not doing anything, and at 3.3 to 3.8 gigahertz, so you do not have to worry about burning or destroying anything. Another cool program, of course, CC Cleaner. CC Cleaner is a well-known program, well-used, and I love it for a lot of its cool features. So, I'm going to be having an update, so this is going to be, I actually didn't pre-update, so I'm going to say no thanks. Let me just show you how this works. So what you can do is you can, of course, clean the temporary files that your PC has on them. I'll show you how that works in a second. I'm actually just going to cancel. Uh, actually, no, I can continue, okay. Uh, because I thought I was going to clean my uh, Windows Chrome and I don't want it to do that. So there you go. It cleaned up some uh, 3.8 megabytes of uh, useless items you can also scan for a registry um, what's it called errors so that's cool as well uh, you can review selected issues click no then click fix all selected issues and one of the greatest tools is the uninstall tool which will allow you to uninstall programs that you didn't even know you had on your PC uh, for example Rhea plugs. I completely forgot I had this. I'm probably gonna delete it later on, but I'm not sure what it is. So always double check what something is. So yeah, really cool. You have a soft data updater as well. You have startup. Uh, this is the same thing that we showed you earlier. So the services, except this shows you even more uh, services inside of your PC. Yeah, browser browser, data scanalyzer, duplicate folder, and so on and so on. Really, really nice program, both in the description down below. So what we're gonna do is go and go into the settings tab here, and then we're going to go in privacy. What we're gonna do is go to location. We're gonna turn this off. 
camera turn this off definitely don't want other uh things to take control of your cameras then allow microphone access click this on because some programs uh, for example, this doesn't need, and uh, these two don't need it, but some programs do, oh, actually, wait, allow apps uh, to access your microphone, yeah. You have to be careful because some apps uh, do actually use your microphone. For example, Warframe, for me, World of Tanks, then TeamSpeak, then OBS, and, and so on, so you have to be careful about that. Voice activation you can turn off, notifications you can turn off, account off, content off off calendar you can turn off as well phone calls call history emails uh you mostly just turn everything off here same goes for radios messaging other devices background apps background apps disable every single background app you do not need 90 percent of these things if you want to keep a certain item activated just click on and then turn off the ones that you do not need i personally don't really need any of these so i disable all of them app diagnostics uh click this uh off as well always click the change and then off then automatic file download you don't have to do anything here then documents as i said change and then off and then pictures same videos same and then file a system yeah keep it off and turn it off now game mode uh first things first gay xbox game bar keep this off captures uh do not touch anything here because you don't actually have anything to touch here game mode now game mode has been sort of like proven to work much better uh in amd systems and a little bit less on nvidia systems so if you have an amd system try it out put it on i i keep it on and i have pretty decent fps in games so in my opinion i would keep it on and uh, use it if you see any dips maybe because of this keep it off and yeah pretty basic and simple now while you're here what you're gonna click is related settings and then graphic settings and then what you can use here uh, is you can put certain apps for high performance so what you're gonna do is click browse and then for me of course you can go into your steam library steam apps common and warframe and then select the warframe.x64.exe and then put it it's gonna appear here and then go click it click options and then high performance and click save and then you're done with this you can go back in xbox networking you do not have anything here to touch Okay, so that's most yet, and now let's start up the Warframe launcher. Now, what you're gonna do here, sorry if the if the music gets a bit loud. So what you're gonna do is verify the cache here because this is gonna allow Warframe to start up much faster and run much faster. Not much faster, but a little bit faster. Use DirectX 11. Classic engine. Uh, I would prefer to use the classic engine. You can use the enhanced, but you are may you watching an XP, you know, an XP. Sorry, not XP. FPS boost video, so classic is the way to go. Full screen, bulk download, aggressive download, and a launch GPU acceleration. You can keep all these on. Um, this you don't have to touch. And then once you verify, you can optimize the download cache as well. And that is mostly it inside of Warframe. So what we're going to do as well is right click on the Warframe, go to manage, and then browse local files. Then once the folder appeals, right click on it, go to properties, go to compatibil compatibility, sorry, Dis uh, uh, disable this, so disable full screen optimization, and then go to change high DPI setting and override high DPI uh, scaling behavior uh, scaled by application and click OK and then click apply and then click OK. So that is mostly it. Hope you guys enjoyed. This has been the Gaming Weasel. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, leave a like, comment and all that cool jazz. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you guys on the next one. This has been the Gaming Weasel over and out.